talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is funny pet videos, um, but also really how video content has become a meaningful part of our business at Fresh Pet. So when I started at Fresh Pet a few years ago, the idea that we would have a video that would go viral was nothing more than a dream to me. I was a young digital marketer tinkering on Facebook and begging for a few percentages of our TV budget. But today, we've had two successful viral videos under our belt, and digital is now a meaningful part of our marketing mix. So what I want to talk about today is, number one, how we got there, and number two, what we've learned along the way. So for those of you who are unaware, which is probably a lot of you, um, Fresh Pet is the country's first fresh refrigerated pet food brand. And we started in 2007 and have been growing tremendously year over year ever since. But we still have a problem. Um, though we are growing very quickly, we still have very low awareness. We only have 17% aided awareness at this point. And we really have the challenge of not only educating about our brand, but about an entirely different category in the pet space. So I know we've talked a lot in the last 48 hours about the death of television. Um, but for us, TV has really been our workhorse and continues to really work well for us. Um, we see that with TV, we can obviously control our message, we can tell our story, and we have a pretty interesting story to tell. And with every flight of television that we run, we actually see an increase in sales. And so that's pretty compelling and pretty tough to argue against. But that being said, in 2013 to 2014, we did start to see some diminishing returns on TV. And so the marketing team turned to digital to help bolster our efforts. And our objectives with digital were to drive awareness and purchase intent at least as well or better than what we were seeing with TV. So in 2014, we embarked on a pretty big year of test and learn. Um, we actually had a real team and real budgets. And we basically tried just about anything that you can that we thought could work. But we put everything up against a very rigorous set of KPIs, really set out to prove that digital could work for our business and work in conjunction with TV. So we took a lot of big risks last year. But with those risks, we also saw some really huge rewards. So as you can see behind me, all of the KPIs that we were really measuring, we grew in leaps and bounds. But at the end of the day, a KPI is just a KPI. We really needed to prove that in isolation, digital could drive sales. And that's where video content came in. Um, so as I mentioned, we had two videos go viral this year. And with that, we were not only able to drive the majority of a lot of these numbers, but we were actually able to tie it back to sales. And so I'm going to talk about both of those videos. Um, so what did we learn? Let's start with a little redhead kid named the Apparently Kid. Action! Hi, I'm Noah, and today we'll be talking about pets. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Apparently, this is my first ever TV commercial. The one plus two dogs named Barney and, and Ed. They both they both had a friendship. They, it would never end. Barney, Barney. But he didn't like any of the food. It made his fart stink all day and night. Don't try and touch my toes. I like cat. I like dogs better. You they like to look your face. Well, first, you're going to have to train them to be a good boy. A second, you're going to have to play fetch. Fetch! Healthy dog food. Well, apparently, fresh pet food is the best food than ordinary dog food. He wants to eat it every night, every day. Make back the cat! Apparently, now that's some good food. And we can keep on placing some TNT that one, but, but don't blow it up until you have something captured in there. This is the greatest. Pet food for a pet! And I also keep my dog's food in the fridge. Now what? And I think Simba will be fresh as a turkey on Thanksgiving. My nickname, Apparently Kid, so uh, Apparently you, if you don't know my name, just say Apparently Kid and, and uh, and a phone number, five, zero, two, seven. Just call the apparel kid when you see this commercial. Bye, and apparently, I'm the winner! 
So a couple of insights from that video that we then ended up applying to the future video. Um, number one, when we were coming up with the idea for the Apparently Kid, it was really important to let culture lead the creative rather than our brand. So for us, it was about what are our consumers actually going to care about, what's actually going to make them want to engage with this video and ultimately share it. And that was pretty scary and different for us, um, coming from the world of mostly TV advertising where we're so able to hit on all the brand attributes that we need to. This, as you could see, was so much more about apparently kid hilarity than about fresh pet messaging. But that balance and striking the right balance is essential for a video's shareability. Um, number two, speed to market really matters when it comes to viral video. Um, that was especially true in the case of the Apparently Kid. So we were really trying to ride the wave of interest around him. And actually, from um, ideation all the way through launch, it was only a two-week process. We were trying to time it with his appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show. So we really had to be flexible and quick to make decisions, and that's ended up coming into play for both of the videos that we've done. Um, number three, PR is absolutely everything when it comes to sparking a fire for a video. So we um, really weren't able to support our videos with much ad spend at all. Um, and for that reason, PR really needed to do the job, and luckily for us, it did. Um, but really, it did everything that we needed it to do in terms of driving interest about not only the video, but about our brand in general, such that over 94% of our views were actually organic. So when we, oh, sorry about that. So when we ended up getting four million views on the Apparently Kid, we were absolutely over the moon. But we weren't sure if it was something that we'd be able to replicate. Um, a, there was a lot of talk going around about it being lightning in a bottle. And then we had our second video, the Fresh Pet Holiday Feast. <laughs> Um, so one of the things that was most interesting about this video was actually about where we placed it. So we put the video on both YouTube and Facebook endemically, and we actually found that while it did incredibly well on YouTube with 8 million views, Facebook drove 20 million views, and that was really just from using their native tool. And I think really what that speaks to is just the shareable nature of video on Facebook. So that was a really interesting learning for this one. Um, we also saw with the Holiday Feast that video content really can drive sales as well as TV can. And so basically, if you think about it, imagine that every time we run 100 GRPs of TV, we see a 15% lift in sales. Now, that's obviously not true. I wouldn't have a job if that were the case. Um, but what we did find is that in the weeks following the Holiday Feast video, we saw about a quarter of the lift that we would expect from TV. But we also spent a quarter of the cost. So when you start to think about it that way, it really creates a compelling case for digital video. 
And finally, and this was really an interesting one, um, less branding really can be more when it comes to this video. So we ended up doing a quant study on the holiday feast video to see what people actually were taking away from it. Was it just silly and frivolous, or were they taking away a message that really mattered to us? And the results were overwhelmingly positive from everything from brand attribution to purchase intent to some messages that we didn't even remotely include in the video. Um, and they all led up to our highest test scores to date, even across TV, which I have to caveat, the studies were not apples to apples. But either way, it's pretty powerful data. So in conclusion, um, we've really found with video content that we have a system that's replicable and that really works for us. It's definitely not always easy, but the rewards are well worth the crazy. Thank you. So Katie, oh. one question. Yeah. Did your, did your unaided and aided awareness go up? Uh, but what, we have, actually, we have the tracker in place, but we haven't gotten the results back yet. Haven't gotten the results yeah, of it yet. but I would assume so. So that's kind of the key metric, right, in, in terms yeah, of... Yeah, I mean, for us, it was definitely sales, though awareness is very much important. We need to see ROI in everything that we spend. So. Terrific, terrific. Yep. Thank you for the case. Yeah, thank you.